Okay, this is the uh, third part of this van build. And in this one, we're going to do the insulation. We're going to do some of the insulation. We're still waiting for some to arrive. Uh, so we're going to do some of the insulation. Um, the rock and roll bed arrives in this episode. So we're going to take a look at that and check that out. We can measure it up. And then from that, we can do a proper floor plan and a work schedule. And then we should be able to motor on with the whole build. That's what we're doing. Now insulation is quite a topic in the van building community, uh, I do believe. But what we're going for here is very simple stuff. This is uh, shredded up plastic bottles. Okay, so we're going to open this stuff up and start at the bottom of the van and work our way up. So I'm going to cut a piece of this, I'm going to measure first, um, I'm going into this void here, um, underneath the van, that's quite deep actually, so I'm going to measure pillar to pillar, and it tells me that that is 120 centimetres, so I'm going to cut 120 centimetres off this roll, 120 there and I think this stuff will just cut with a Stanley knife. No, maybe not. If not, hopefully it'll just tear. Right. Now I just want to check the depth of that. I'll stick with and check the depth. That's about the same, about the same depth as the width of the uh, roll, which is good. Um, but I think I'll cut this in half and try to stuff it into these little corner pockets here and then push it along with this piece of wood. <laughs> this is all experimental, <laughs> but <laughs> we've got to give it a go. Now I'm just thinking this may go in, in two sections here, which may make the job a little easier. We'll see if we can do a similar thing in there. That's this area here. So again, want to measure that. Measure it up to about here. Um, it's going to be 55 centimeters. This, I think, will hold itself up. But to help with this one, we have some of this uh, contact adhesive. So, in we go. it and then that is right down to the bottom and it's sticking there okay so that's the first panel um, insulated I've stuffed all these in here stuffed this pillar we've done this and we've done right down in the wells down to the bottom of the van uh, so we're going to continue same procedure right the way around just to tell you with this material here it tears very easily this way, but there seems to be a grain to it, and it doesn't tear very easily the other way. It's just got to be very slow. I found the Stanley knife doesn't really make much of an impression on it either. So it's just a very slow go if you want to get it down that way. So we've made good progress with the insulation here. I've got all these side panels done, um, all the lower panels, and on the doors. The upper panels here are a different consideration, and we're going to take a look at that right now. The thing with this, I'm going to panel this, um, it's going to have cladding on it, um, but recessed. Um, as I say, the, these pillars will be carpeted and then we'll have the recessed um, cladding going around there. And that's this one and the one on the opposite side. Uh, and the back doors, uh, they'll be the, t the tops of the back doors will be the same. So the problem we have here is that it's very shallow at this side and fairly deep at that side but whichever side that is it's deeper than the insulation and I think that would put a little bit too much force on the panel so we need a different solution for this so a bit of a stop and start sort of day but not to worry um, we'll make some decisions about these uh, panels 
this evening and we'll make some decisions about how to do the roof. But the good news is the rock and roll bed did arrive. It's in the yard. This means that I can measure this, get the exact dimensions and then actually make a proper floor plan. I never used or uh, had any experience of these things in the past but this looks like fairly good quality stuff. Um, as I say we're going to measure it and take the exact dimensions but just to take a look around it um, it has a gas strut on the back here which puts it back into the seating position. It all looks very well made. The um, has huge bearings on these runners so they run out very smoothly. Um, it has inertia seat belts already fitted. Uh, the hinges look like really good quality. This is all really nicely done. Now this is from a company called what are they called? They're called Rock and Roll Bed Limited. .co.uk. Uh, I bought this one on eBay, but they do have a website. Now again, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just when I buy material like this, if it looks good, I always like to let others know that um, this looks like a quality piece of material. Uh, time will tell, obviously. I've just got it today. But first impressions, it's looking good. I'll set the camera up over here and we'll see how it works. I believe the idea is this front clip clips and then the whole thing presses down like so. I've got to say that was pretty much effortless. Now to put it back up there is a catch at the front here. Just here, like a little pull cord, and if we pull that, <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Got a piece of paper and a pencil, so it's length. Make absolutely sure from the very back to the very front of the frame is. 177.5 centimeters. So, 177.5. Now, obviously, the bed itself will be longer than that because we can put boards on here and the boards can overhang to some degree. Uh, they'll certainly overhang at the back because we'll put a cutout in to take it around the pillar. This is just on the board itself. Uh, I'm assuming that the back of the bed sits flush with the pillar. The corner pillar in the van sits flush with that and then the board is cut out to take it up to the length of the back door. Um, now I think that pillar, guesswork again, but I think the pillar is about 15. So if I added 15 onto that, I've got what, 92. I think. Yeah, 192. That would make the bed 192 centimetres long, which I believe is over six feet. Um, so this is good. Now, the width of the frame is 98 centimetres. Width is 98 centimetres. Now again, I'm assuming that we can have a bit of overhang. If we're going to use a 12 mil ply uh, to cover this, to put the cushions onto, we'll be able to overhang that a bit. So I'm saying we'll be able to get that to about to 110, 115 from the wall of the van. Um, again, yet to be decided, but I'm going, to I'm going to just look at those measurements on the floor of the van and just get some rough idea of where this is going to sit. And that in turn will give me a rough idea of how wide uh, or deep I can make the uh, kitchen units. So anyhow, one more time. I've been meaning to do a sort of detailed plan of this van build for some time now. I always prefer working off a plan and I think we've got most of the stuff done in the van which um, doesn't really require a plan. So last night I uh, took all of the dimensions, all of the dimensions of the internal components etc etc and I made a plan and here it is. So first of all I measured the exact dimensions of the van which is 2930 
by 1660. Uh, this is the plan view, obviously. Um, I've marked the door in here, I've put the wheel arches in, and I've put these pillars, which are also there, and there's these little triangular pieces in the front. Just so we know the exact layout and where stuff can and can't go. Now, the first consideration was the rock and roll bed. And I've decided, this may change, I've decided that this is going to be 260 from the back door. There's a reason for that. And that is I want the cushion to actually curl around this pillar. Now when there's a cushion on there, it will be level with the pillar. And if we do a little cut out in the wood, when this back section of the bed folds up, it should be flush with the back door. That's the plan. Um, now the bed, when extended, will come to this mark here. And the whole thing will end up um, 115 centimetres wide. And I think it was about 190 or more uh, long. So six feet, more than six feet uh, in length. That'll be good placed right there. That clears the wheel arches okay. Everything good with that. Now, on the other side of the van, we're going to have mainly the uh, utilities, so to speak. So here we have a battery box. Now in the battery box, we're not going to have all of the electrical components. We are going to have the battery and possibly the um, shore charger. The actual controller I'm going to put outside the box so that we have easy access to it and we can always check the state of the battery easily. Moving right along. Under here we have the fridge. Um, now again, there's a placement with the fridge. If the hob is placed offset from the fridge, we can lose some of the height of this cabinet. I'll show you on the next drawing. So the hob and sink unit is just offset from the actual fridge in order to accommodate that. The rest of this will just be worktop bench space. And then we have the tall cupboard, which is going from the uh, floor up to the ceiling at the back. And this has ended up at um, 8.50. I was sort of queuing and aing a little bit about how uh, long this cupboard should be. But judging by the position of the uh, bed and seat, 850 is going to be a good length for that. Now, the depth of these, the actual units are going to be uh, 420 deep. With the worktop on, that's going to come to 435, but obviously the worktop only comes up to here. The fridge unit wants to be 500, again, plus the worktop. But this is okay because the bed only goes up to here, so there's plenty of room for that to stick out a little bit. That's the plan. It's fairly precise in uh, measurement. As I say, the only thing which may change, this bed may go back here a touch, um, or it may not. I'm going to wait until I actually get it into the van and offer it up to see how that really looks. Now, side elevation. Um, same thing, same setup here. We've got the uh, battery box, we've got the fridge, we've got the units, and then we've got this tall unit, and here we have the bed. Um, what can I tell you about this? This is in 720 tall, the uh, the whole thing. As I say, if we'd had the sink directly over the fridge, that would have pushed that up to about 750, 760, and that's getting very close to the glass on the window. So I wanted to try to keep that down, and I think the best way to do it is just to offset that um, sink. So anyway, we have the battery box, we have the fridge, We this will be an opening cabinet and we'll have the water tanks in it and probably a shelf for any other bits and pieces. We're going to have three opening drawers here. Again, the heights of these may change, a couple of mil here, a couple of mil there. And this I'm going to make into a hatch so that all of this section here is accessible from there. And I was thinking this for, for the duvet, um, sheets and pillars and stuff like that. If this hatch opens, you'll just be able to stuff them in there and they'd be well out of the way and it would utilise this space, which would be difficult to access any other way. Um, the tall cabinet at the back itself, there's still a decision to be made about the 
door in this. I've seen these shaped doors. Don't know if I like them that much. Maybe necessary, but I'm not sure. But I was thinking also one of the sliding doors. I could make square like that. And then when the bed is out, you have uh, full access to it. And when the bed is in seating mode, you would still have access to it. So I'm thinking this like a shutter. Um, they do have a name, but I uh, can't remember it. Anyhow, there may be one of those going in there. This will then be halved down the back. And you will have access from the back here to the other bits and pieces in there. Also, there's a big space underneath the chair, um, the seat, which we'll deal with when we come to it. <laughs> Um, I'm going to have a couple of little cupboards up here, just out the way of the hob, um, so there's no fear of that scorching. Um, little top cupboards for food, this type of thing. This obviously would be, this is our opening window, and this will be clad panelled. So that's the plan. Um, now, to go along with that, we are busy last night, we also have a work schedule. Uh, this is extremely ambitious, uh, because... We're going to be waiting for things. I'm waiting for things right now. I'm still waiting for the insulation to arrive. I'm still waiting for the Sikaflex to arrive. And I'm still waiting for some cables to arrive. So although we have a wonderful work schedule, all in order and all, all good, um, this is going to change fantastically. Even like right now, it's going to change. Um, but I thought it was a good idea to put all of the major jobs down and um, all of the major things that one would have to do in order to get these jobs done, just so we've got something to work from, so we're not just going randomly or blind with this. So, we have a drawn plan, we have a work schedule, we have a beautiful sunny day outside, let's get to the van. So the job we can get on with today is insulating the wheel arches. This material arrived, and this is what I'm gonna to use to do it with. Now I'm gonna do this in a few different sections. Uh, it's a very difficult shape to, um, to insulate to get this stuff round. So I'm going to do a straight section from there to there, fold that down. I'll do these pieces round the corners and then I'll fill in these triangular pieces later. Um, so let's see how all of that goes. I'm going to start off by measuring from there to probably about out here, I think. Um, 38, 38 centimeters. So we have our roll of material. There it is. And we simply want to measure 38 centimeters in there and cut it off the whole thing. Back it on there like that. So we want to bring it down. Get a measurement on that, which is there. And we should just be able to stand the knife that off. That's okay. So we'll have these voids to take into account. This is the same thing as the floor. Somewhere I have my screwdriver. One second, found it. So I'm going to use that to push this stuff into these. And we'll see how that all goes. And this is the problem with this, you see, the uh, corners are not going to go in there very well. So we can push them in and get an idea of a little slither, a little V-shape to cut out of there. And we'll push this down and obviously this is all going to get taped up afterwards. So if there are any little discrepancies, we will sort them out then. Now, these side pieces, I've already cut this. This, I think, is 15 mil. I've cut it, sorry, 15 centimeters. I'm going to put that up there and mark it just there. Now, again, we'll have a similar thing here where this will just nip together. Take a line through it, like so, and if we 
tongue to the above side and cut that. You probably get much better at this the more you do it. But see. So that will fit round there and it wants to come up to this piece here to begin with. So we'll cut that there. Mark it on the back with the marker pen, just this curve here. That'll give us a rough. It's not going to be precise, but it'll be rough. It'll be good enough. So that's going in there. We push that round. That's the bottom of it there. Now, we've got this sort of thing marked, so I'm going to just roughly draw that in. Cut that off and see if we're anywhere near. trim that in just as I'm here. Okay so we've got all that done. Now the last thing to do is put this silver tape on. This is a nightmare stuff to use by the way. It keeps curling up on itself and everything. I found the best way to do it is to always keep this off because very difficult to get that back off the uh, sticky. So always keep it a little bit free. And the best bet I've found is to do it like this and just peel the back away as you put the stuff on. Like that. That's both the wheel arches done. They're looking good. Um, as I say, they're going to get carpeted over um, with the rest of the wall panels on the far side. Okay, so a little bitty PC sort of um, episode. We've got some insulation done. We've had a look at the rock and roll bed. And we have a plan. So from this point, the whole build should go a lot more smoothly, um, a lot more coordinated, hopefully. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, do subscribe to the channel please and do give the video a thumbs up. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.